that yeah it was it was an experience because drew he helped me um sneak move from where i was at in uh studio city he helped me sneak move and that's one of them instances in my life that altered my life it was great staying there which i learned a lot of shit um embarked on a lot of stuff but it hurt me too it hurt me too because that was one of them man moments that i missed out on on owning if that makes sense it was one of the moments in life that i could have stood up as as a man and 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 said what needed to be said instead of running away from it and that's what i did so i'll tell you about it yeah let me get on there <sighs> at that time before i moved to 54th normandy i was staying with this uh music producer in studio city and I told part of that story, story already in, in another episode of uh, that one time I, um, and it's on YouTube. But I was staying with this music producer in Studio City, platinum producing music producer, and he, you know, he got the platinum plaques on his wall. He did work with Michael Jackson um, and a slew of other celebrities, so uh, music celebrity. And and um, and the reason why I was staying with him was to be introduced to some people in the business. And, and trade, write something for him, uh, a television show, which I still have. There was, nothing was ever done with it, but there have been some things that have been on television since then that were similar. So that means my shit is still viable because I had a twist on my shit. But anyway, I was there to write something for him and, turn, and trade for him introducing me to some people in the business so I can get on as a writer. And, and I want to say the day that I moved, we snuck move was the day that a Christmas party was happening that I should have went to. It was the main reason why I was staying there. It was one of the reasons why I was angry that I left. This is one of them dumb things that I did when I was young. I, I was angry that he wasn't, he was, he was being too slow on doing what he said to do. I, Cause I didn't wrote the story for him and some other shit. <laughs> you know, I wrote 15 drafts of this shit. And I, you know, but in retrospect, thinking about it, as an older gentleman, it's like, yeah, I fucked that opportunity up because the person that was throwing the party, she she died maybe a year or some change ago, maybe two years ago. The person that was throwing this party was a big time television producer. And I'll tell you her name in a minute. Rest in peace. And he was best friends with her. And that was one of his pitches to me. I'm best friends with so-and-so. I connect you right every year. He told me about this party every year. Da, 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 and whoop, whoop, whoop. I can walk you right into her office. So I'm like, bet. So I, it was the day of this party. And he even asked me before he left. He said, man, you sure you don't want to go to this thing, man? But I already had it in my mind. Fuck you. I'm leaving, you know. As soon as you leave this bitch, like my boy coming over, we going to sneak move. You know, that'll show you. <laughs> Man, the person that was throwing this party, you can look her up. Her name is Unetta T. Boom. And you you look her up, you're like, damn. Uh, she's a little black television shows. Uh, matter of fact, I was at uh, Flex's house celebrating with them when they got the, uh, the green light for one-on-one. Because -on -one. I went to the, uh, their... Uh, that was their after party, their marriage after party, or whatever. I can't remember what you call that shit, but uh, they had a little party after they got married. They had a party after the party. So we went to the party at a venue on Ventura somewhere and then uh, went over to their house for some kind of after, or some one of their friends or somebody's house. Um, but yeah, that was her show, one on one. And had I. Had I gone to that party, who 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 knows what could have happened? I, I I fucked that up. Who knows what could have happened? Nothing could have happened. But knowing me, oh, I'd have got on. Something would happen. I'd have got on. I'd have got on. And I and like I haven't had this conversation with myself since then. Maybe once I thought about it. But like right now, I'm having real time thoughts about 
what I did back then in making that move. Yeah, making that move to, you know, South Central, turn, you know, got me into rapping and writing. Um, it got me opportunities. One, to open up at the House Blues, even though I wasn't ready for it, but that was an experience that I could talk about and know that, you know, why you shouldn't take opportunities that you're not ready for, all that type of shit. Uh, great friends. Um, I learned a lot of shit. You know, got to be in a couple music videos, got to interview Jill Scott, all kind of shit being on 54th Normandy. But the things that I could have gained based on why I was there in the first place, had I not ran from that confrontation, life may have been a little bit different right now. That's a, that's a, what would they call it? Coming to Jesus moment I'm having right the fuck now. Like, I fucked that up. And I was in my early 20s. I had to be what? Like 23, 24? Uh, yeah. That was, that was, you know, when I got into getting into show business, shit was happening for me fast. Cause, cause I was, I was, I was on my shit. You know, I was that cat. If you said, <clears throat> you approached me and said, hey, man, what do you do? I'm a writer. If you shook me upside down, four scripts was falling out of my pocket. To whereas the norm was when I would meet people and say, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm a I'm an author. I'm a this, that, and the third. And I say, let me see. They would, oh, hey, what had happened was I, my, I, ain't bought a, I ain't bought a computer yet. And so, yeah, it's all up in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I made sure never lose, never a loss, always a lesson. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. But man, <laughs> my pockets is like, no, nigga. <laughs> That's a loss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm having like real time epiphanies and shit right now. Like that's something that that I that I fucked up, and nobody else fucked that shit up for me. I fucked it up, acting like a child, basically. You know, acting like a child. I was I was mad, and, and instead of you know, not only did I lose the opportunity to possibly gain what I went there to gain is. I lost a whole bunch of CDs that I had collected. <laughs> I left my pack of CDs. I had, I had, uh, what's that LL Cool J movie and uh, Omar Epps? Uh, what's that movie called? I had that movie. I had, I had all the Matrix that came out, Matrix 1 and 2. I had, uh, I had all the good movies up in that bitch. I'm mad. <laughs> I was mad. That was the only thing I was mad about. That's how ignorant I was. <laughs> I was mad. When I moved out, that I left my CD, my my DVDs there. <laughs> Not that I left an opportunity there, but I left my damn DVDs. I was upset, nigga. <laughs> man, man. Yep, you know the T-Bone. Yep, she was an idol even before I went there. Because I watched her, you know, watched her work. I watched her, you know, the shows that she made. I loved them. We loved them. And uh, yeah, man, I, I think about that shit. And, and sometimes I think about the first movie deal that I turned down, the first, you know, the record deal that I turned down. And when I think about those, I don't regret those. I don't regret doing those things because cause it wasn't about the money for me. It wasn't, a, it's never all that glory, you know. Did, yeah, did I want to, I, I, I wanted to win an Oscar and be a star and all that other shit, yeah. But I wasn't willing to um, feel like I was selling my soul for the shit. And that's probably why I haven't, you know, become that superstar. Because there's some soul selling. You know what I'm saying? You got to, in some aspects of it, you got to sell. You got to sell. I remember, and I, and it was confirmed the other day, I was watching uh, Breakfast Club. And um, uh, my man kind of admitted it. Because he's a corporate comic, seemingly. And he's got all these television shows and 
and and in the mainstream now, he's like, man, yeah, yeah, I got the, I can't say certain shit, you know. Uh, my man, um, from uh, Blackish. Uh, why I can't think of people's name today, man? Uh, I got stories about him, Dion Cole, him too, in the early days of stand up. Uh, I remember, yeah, I talk about that a long time. But he said it. He's like, it's certain shit. And I was, as a comic, I'm looking at him like, damn, I, I don't know if I could live like that. I mean, you know, I want that bag. Like, he, I know he getting, but to sacrifice not being able to say, what you need to say or want to say on the stage as a comic, the reason why he got put on in the first place for saying the shit that he says, I don't know if I can live like that. I know I know myself. I, I can't. I, I, I know I... That, it, like, it compares... Me being like that compares to... The re only reason why I graduated from high school... <laughs> you call it silly. But the only reason why I graduated was... I knew myself. I thought like this when I was young. I knew myself. I thought in the future, I was like, I wouldn't be able to handle it that my peers graduated and I didn't. I, I put myself in future. I'm a writer. I put myself in future conversations back then. You know, talking, I'm being in a conversation and they say, so what school did you go to graduate from? I knew I didn't want to be, I didn't want that embarrassment to be like, oh yeah, you know, I never graduated. I didn't want that embarrassment. I knew that. At a, I knew that. So that's the only reason, because even when I ran away from home as a kid, I always got caught because I was at school. <laughs> I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know the runaway rule. I didn't know you weren't supposed to get caught like that. You know, I, I always got caught because I was at school because I didn't want to fall behind because I knew I wouldn't be able to handle it mentally if my peers graduated and I didn't. So that's how I got, <laughs> that's how I started doing stand up. The person I used to write for in Hollywood took me to a show, uh, uh, a uh, a comedy competition in the uh, Oakland Bay area. That's how I met Dion Cole and and uh, Tony Roberts and 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 um, uh, everybody else I've seen on BET and, and and that's famous now and shit. Uh, I saw them niggas way back in the day. Um, and when I, I remember when I was watching them perform on stage, I said to myself, as a as a person writing for another comic too, I'm there. I said I could do that. And that Friday, because it was in the middle of the week, sometime that Friday when the competition was done, when we went back to LA, that Friday I hopped on stage. I've been doing it ever since. So it was out of envy that I became a stand up. <laughs> You know, that's, that's all that was. It wasn't because that was my career choice. It was out of envy, out of seeing people that looked like me doing it. I was already writing. So it was a natural, that's why I said, I, I think I would have always became a comic because it was it was just inevitable. I was a class clown, always cracking jokes. I wrote comedy, you know, I, I, and now I'm writing for a comedian. Come on, come on. But yeah, man, staying in South Central, meeting the people that I met in California, period. And 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 the follow-through. This leads me to the follow-through. 